السلام علیکم سعیدی السلام و تبا سعیدی how to deal with people who hurt us deeply and make us lose our patience how should one deal with them in a way that makes us avoid being so angry keep the love And the way to the rose is through the thorn. Who doesn't make you angry? That's where the reward is, not to be only the people who make you happy but to traverse the thorns so that one day you can smell the fragrance of the rose. This is the path, this is why Gul and Muhammadi that the way to Prophet is through the thorns and through the character and Allah doesn't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. Have you ever wondered why some people have and face so many difficult people? <laughs> Maybe they just don't learn. Maybe they're not just getting it and then the, the thorns multiply. So you're going up this path to get to the rose. You think that if you sort of yell and scream at one thorn the rest just disappear or now a hundred more just appeared upon the, the stem above you because Allah's not happy. Every time you lose your cool and become angered and become all sorts of different characteristics and whatever Allah wants to test us in, ufawudu amri in Allah in Allahu basirun bil ibad. Ya Rabbi you see my condition, this person keep bothering me, stay quiet, have good character, do your zikr, meditate, don't gossip, don't do anything anything bad, try not to answer back, try to exhibit the best of character and Allah inshaAllah begin to relieve the thorns. InshaAllah Allah puts a person in a condition hoping for a change of character. I don't change the condition of a person until they change what's within themselves. So people who say there's no meditation, well how the heck are they going to change themselves if they don't contemplate what's their condition? Allah is saying in Qur'an, I'm not going to change your condition until you change what's within yourself. How will you know what's within yourself if you don't sit and contemplate and make tafaqqur? Why that happen? Why this guy bother me? Why is it like this? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So everyone has to sit and contemplate and Allah gave a special category None will know these realities except the people of tafakkur. If you want to be from the elite and the khawas then enter the way of tafakkur and contemplate. Every action contemplate like a chess game, why that's happening? So what's in it in me and what's my character and what's my response and what's my surrounding and how should I re be responding? And we change what's within ourselves. And then Allah changes the surrounding and the condition inshaAllah. The battle is for the believer and victory is for Allah As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam Can we please recite on behalf of a very sick elderly relative? Can you what? Can we pray for them or like recite on them? Of course you pray for everyone. Not only the sick, you can pray for the healthy. InshaAllah. And what to recite? From that? Yeah. All the du'as. 
all the du'as there, du'a mandur, the ummah du'a, or all the du'as, du'a ayatul kursi for protection, all the du'as are there inshaAllah for the sick, for, for those whom are afflicted under difficulty. Dua inariya for, for relief of, of difficulties and hardships. So all, all of them in the durood sharif all the salawats also have the relief of affliction and sickness and difficulty. The whole app is based on that. So all of them make the madad, make the connection and begin to recite the different durood sharif and the different du'as on the app at all times inshaAllah. Recite the awrad of every salah because that has a formula by Sultanul Awliya. So you recite the awrad of what you're supposed to recite for Surat Al-Asr, Surat Al-Zur and then recite the Qur'an Al-Kareem, Ayatul Kareem, the chapters that Mawlana Shaykh wants you to recite and then the du'as and the awrad for that and that should relieve many difficulties. So alhamdulillah. So that the Yaseen at Fajr time and all the etiquette of uh, Fajr has a tremendous relief of difficulties for the day that's going to start. So Naqshbandiya is all, all of that, all that reality, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum respected Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam Sayyidi, which translation of the Holy Qur'an should we read? Forgive me for my lack of adab. Any anyone that you want to read, if you're reading in English and Urdu and Arabic and most of the translations have been altered anyways. So you read it in transliteration so that you can see the word that they're trying to play with and then read the English. For us when we read the English and then look at the transliteration it doesn't match their interpretation. So you know it's a hit and miss. Yusuf Ali passed away and they still translate him and change it. So he's changing it from the grave apparently for the, for the Saudis but uh, what can you do? You try your best and recite and look at the transliteration, look at the words and why they're translating the words into English because it's basically a tafsir which means it's that person's understanding of what they think the Holy Qur'an means and that can be oceans and oceans of, of realities. So inshaAllah which, whichever one people feel most comfortable and, and most appropriate with inshaAllah. I think Shaykh Tahir Qadri has an interpretation of Qur'an which is Ahlul Sunnah and Alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam how and when do we know when we can move from beginner level to intermediate level of meditation, increasing our number of zikr, switching, switching from tongue to heart? You know when you know I would imagine, so just keep doing your beginning level and be humble and know that if you made a connection, you feel the connection, you feel the presence of the shaykh. And at that time they'll inform you. So when you know, you know. When you don't, you're thinking through your head, what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to make your basic connection. When your basic connection is so strong you feel the presence and they'll be telling you exactly what to do. So it's not a physical event in which please turn to page 45 and I'll begin reciting. It's a spiritual experience so that's why people have to connect, they have to believe themselves to be nothing, you know, efface oneself into nothingness, make the connection, build the love, build the, the, the connection and through that connection they'll begin to be inspired. And that's why we said inspiration is for ibadah, not inspired to go out and bother people, oh I've been inspired to tell you, you know everything you're doing is wrong. Is the inspiration of ibadah that I'm being inspired now to recite more, to do more zikr, to pray more, to do more salawats. Those nobody listens to. The inspiration they're trying to listen to is nafsani. You know what? I'm going to tell this friend of mine that I'm being inspired that they wear their hat wrong. 
that, that's not that, that's nafsani that has nothing to do with inspiration. Inspiration is only a fight against yourself, jihadun nafs, the fight against yourself, never never to to tell anyone anything is not an inspiration inshaAllah. Not even the sharing of dreams because then become you trying to show your station, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to deal with some schools not accepting kids who fast and asking, <coughs> and asking the parents to not let the children do Ramadan during school time? I don't think that's anywhere in the West is illegal. Uh, they have uh, for Jewish holidays, Christian holidays, they have for for Kwanzaa or whatever that holiday is. <laughs> they have for everything so it, this can't be in the West. So if this is like in India and they're, they're against Islam and, and Gujarat then that's something else. But uh, yeah, if anywhere else in the world, the Western world I think it's forbidden to, to come against the religion and uh, the school has to sort of accommodate the religion and the religious practices. Many schools have an area for children to go while they're fasting at lunchtime and they all hang out together in a room that they have like a room or one of the teacher's rooms and they go and they sit there for lunchtime and they do their homework. So it's a matter of going and educating the school, the school system and the school supervisors if it's in the western world that this school is not allowing that, this is against the law, this is a racist and that you know equal uh, opportunity for all religions and equal access for all religions and you educate the school and they put a time out room where the kids can go for lunch and spend time with each other if there are other Muslims on that campus. If not then the school the kids just peacefully go to the library and, and do their practices while people are eating lunch. A lot of it is, is education but if you know in a country where it is, is, is aggressive to Islam then that's something different. You have to resolve how you're going to, to do that, either the kids uh, stay home during that month and they do their practices from home, inshaAllah. They had people in uh, home for two years because of a pandemic. So if, if necessary the kids can learn from home if that's the situation, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, we're summarizing from a long email. Um, if someone has to break their fast due to a dentist appointment, how much do they have to pay? Like a you know, I don't want to get into thicker questions because each madhab is going to have a different understanding and each mullah in their area is going to have a different <laughs> understanding. So I don't want my giving a fatwa which is not my business at all, that's not nothing to do with me is to issue a fatwa then they take it out to their mullah and their mufti. So seek your lo local mufti and uh, based on your madhab what your, your penalty will be. Voluntary breaking of a fast there's a penalty, medical excuse is a penalty so seek the advice of your local muftis and, and based on your madhab inshaAllah. But no, no fricker questions please. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa When the day comes when no food is around, will this energy is what will feed us? InshaAllah, when the day comes and there's no food and people have a belief, then Allah send from the servants of unseen and come to teach people how to bring into this dimension a reality from the unseen dimension in which to sustain themselves. So at that time the jinn world will be very essential and in great support for insan and the people of the physical realm. Just as the jinn world is a great enemy of the physical world the believers that are believing under Allah's command then will be a great support for the physical realm and for those who believe and they built their level of belief that Allah won't leave them to, to be without a support inshaAllah. And this is through Allah's grace and majesty and by Allah's izzah and permission inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi I would just like to say ever since I've been giving a regular gift to Mawlana my children's behavior has improved immensely they never want to do anything without my blessing MashaAllah beautiful alhamdulillah Allah bless you and thank you for your gifts and, and your support and alhamdulillah is the way in which to, to build the immense love and, and nearness inshaAllah so that it's like a family that people only make it as distant as they want to be. If they want to be distant because they have their own reasons why they're trying to be distant. Those who want to be brought near and under the nazar then they treat it like a family and they're active, they participate and they have a, a nearness and proximity to the shaykh and to the, the, the services inshaAllah. Allah bless you and bless all those who are of service. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the reality of Musa alayhi salam, peace be upon him, splitting the water? What the reality in angelic realm? <laughs> Y'all would imagine many realities, and the reality of going from mulk to malakut that every servant on their path towards the Divinely Presence that in the levels of the heart you have to read from the book of the levels of the heart. The Nabi Musa and Sayyidina Ibrahim are on the sir sir from the qalb sir 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 and this is the uh, white and represents the malakut and the world of light opening. So taking one's reality from the physical world which is under Pharaonic kingdom. And amazing that till today the Pharaonic bloodlines this is not from our teachings is what they keep saying, oh these groups of people the Illuminati, <laughs> the nutty ones, yeah they said they're all from Pharaonic bloodline. So still to today they're on the other side of the water. They control that realm which is what? Dunya. And they want you to power their pyramid, build their dunya. Everyone is a slave to build their dunya. So at what time does somebody want to wake up and go to the Promised Land? And that becomes our journey. They want to take all their treasures with them to the Promised Land. You can't take it, means that leave your dunya in your heart that not to make it your main purpose in life to conquer this world and to amass a pyramid. But you do what you do, you can be successful at what you do but it's not even in your heart. And your life is to cross that river and cross the sea, what they call rihsibah. Because when you enter that right at that boundary of, Ya Rabbi I'm sick of this dunya and it's crazy people means that your whole life is now looking at malakut. I want to enter into your heavens Ya Rabbi and that would be then what happens? They go from sirasir to the khafa. The khafa is what? Is your resurrection. Is a rehusiba the angel that comes and picks you up and takes you across and puts you onto malakut. Means now you operate from your spiritual reality, not from physical reality because you got to the Promised Land. And, and ayatullah that the servants whom are continuously at the boundary of that reality they are given a continuous dress of anayatullah in which Allah at times when He's pleased with them He grants them the tajalis of malakut. 
because they're sitting on the furthest boundary asking to go, asking to go back to that side, asking for a parting from this ocean because Pharaoh is coming after them, this dunya is continuously coming after them. And ayatullah is that when they're sitting there Allah all of a sudden sends a tajalli upon them and they don't know where it came from, why it came but Allah's rida and satisfaction. Allah happy with the servant immediately then dresses them from Divinely grace. And that can be at any state, at any time, at, uh, as much as Allah wants. But then the, the perfection of that reality is when Allah sends the angel to take them to the malakut in which their soul is operating from that reality of the souls enrich the reality of this anayatullah in which Allah's anayat and tajallis are continuously dressing their soul. And so alhamdulillah and that's when we talked about the greatness of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq salam and that it was the, the asa and the support of Sayyidina Musa salam and that anyone wishing to leave dunya and to go to Malakut, they need the support of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salam to be Siddiq al-Mutlaq. That from Siddiq al-Mutlaq the truthful servant that was the tajalli for tonight was Allah's anayat and, and dress for Bab and maghfirah because we need Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq take us to Malakut because when Nabi Musa arrived it didn't part for him. Waited as it did in part until Allah said, your asa tap it onto the water. And spiritual understanding of what you know now means that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq has to be granting you a support and najat to leave dunya and enter into malakut which is who is the presence and the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad what we recited last night from Surah Al-Taqweer. How was a Makki with the, the verse described? You're entering into the presence of Rasulul Kareem, the one whom is in the presence of a mighty throne. Because when you're entering Malakut who's there? It's the realm and Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad so naturally who's going to come to greet you to take you to that presence? If you're from Arifin to know then it has to be a support of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq to, to verify your, your Siddiq, you're truthful and you're truthful to your love. That's why betraying love is a really bad action. Even when you've been tested with horrific testing never betray the love. You stay quiet, even you got abused you stay quiet, don't, don't betray the love. We know we speak first hand from that reality. So that presence of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq has to come to grant a support and ajad. So it means then the khuluq and the character and the, the great Siddiq has to give a, a character of love and the verification of love. And when Nabi Musa Allah said, hit it with your staff, he said, I hit with the staff and still didn't open. <laughs> and Allah said, well it has a name, the Khalid al-Rahman, the friend of our Rahman, the Khalid. So again another hint and another clue for the haqqaiqs and this is because <coughs> the awliya of Sayyidina Muhammad are warith al-anbiya of Bani Israel, the knowledges and the stations of the, the prophets of the Jewish people, the station of awliya are like that, that they walk the earth like the prophecies of the Jewish tribes which were all the prophets, means their uloom and their knowledges are at such a level they understood the realities of what those Prophets were holding and touching where they may not have understood at that level, at that time to themselves. 
So it means that it's an immense reality that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq has to come and grant a support and that's why his teaching is that you have to be true to your love. It's the love that brings him, right? So if you know Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq has to come with you, he's very loyal to love. So how could you be standing there and be disloyal to love? And you think he comes to be with you? No. He's they say, what kind of a, a treacherous person are you? They don't come. No sahabi come to treacherous people, that's the other group. Those were the people who were like Yazid. So they didn't come to Yazid and take him across into the heavenly kingdom. There was no sahabi waiting to take Yazid like that. Why? Because that was the… that was the complete altar ego of this reality. All the companions that gave their life for the reality of Prophet now here come a group of people that all they wanted to do was kill the family of Prophet You think that that gained the nearness of the Sahabi or they were astonished thinking, what kind of community is this? That we gave our life for this reality, we were truthful with this love, so no. So it means the great Siddiq is looking for the character of love and truthfulness to that love and as a result they come to support and begin to part the barrier of this ocean of ignorance and gently the soul will be lifted and placed on the oceans of Malakut into the kingdoms under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad Malik al-Hayat. Malik dunya So all of these haqqaiqs they illuminate the heart to understand that what the role and the eternal role of the holy companions and how they're there to support us. If our character matches their character for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzata ma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa Bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.